Right, it's uh, Chris over Dixon at Farm, and today I'm going to go over a few more digital audio terms. Chris, why are you doing this to us? It's the vinyl community. Well, because I've been reading about this stuff lately, and uh, things that I thought I knew, turns out I was wrong, or I had some misconceptions, and maybe you are the same way, or maybe you just like to hear me talk. Um, if so, check out my ASMR videos. They're, uh, they're bound to uh, relax and titillate. Okay, so today I'm going to go over sample rate. Bit depth and bit rate. Sample rate. So, we're trying to capture audio. This guy Nyquist came up with the uh, his theorem that whatever frequency you're trying to capture, if you sample it twice that amount, you will capture it. Now remember, we're trying to capture voltage, an AC waveform. You know, or like this, or whatever the AC waveform. We're capturing voltage and we're trying to turn that into a digital uh, representation of that voltage and then back again. And that's all audio is. Uh, don't be fooled by this uh, misconception that we're capturing sound in the air um, mechanically because we're not quite doing that. Unless you're Edison uh, singing into a diaphragm that's actually being recorded on a cylinder, that doesn't happen. When we take a microphone, we're turning that into a voltage. And then that voltage goes to a tape player head where that voltage is then turned into magnetism that gets recorded on a magnet, uh, magnetic tape. And then when it gets played back, it gets converted back to a voltage. And then it goes to a board where the voltage is manipulated. And then it goes to a cutting head where the voltage then moves another diaphragm. It records on our, uh, uh, our, our record. And then it gets pressed a bunch of times in a bunch of different ways, mothers, fathers, uh, you know, positives, negatives, and then we finally get the record, and then we take the squiggles, and what we're doing is we're just turning it again back into voltage with a, a coil and magnet, and then it gets put into an amplifier and boosted up, and it's all voltage, folks. It's all ball bearings these days. Back to the point. Sample rate. So, if we were trying to capture audio up to 8,000 hertz, we would need to sample 16,000 times a second, and that's the whole theory. That's it. So, if we're trying to capture up to 20,000 hertz, the highest frequencies we could possibly hear, if we uh, sample at 40,000 times a second, we would capture those uh, frequencies. True fact, there's nothing to discuss there. Um, that's it. That's the whole thing. You're not going to capture um, uh, the slices more or less. The way it works voltage-wise on recreating the voltage, the mathematics involved, that's the theory, and it's proven, and that's it. There's no little holes of time that you're missing things. You want to capture the frequency, you sample it twice the rate. Anything above the frequency you're trying to capture is going to start making noise, so you need to filter that out. So, if we're trying to capture above 20,000, we need to make a filter right at 20,000, otherwise we start hearing things that we shouldn't. In uh, the old days, those were mechanical filters built into the CD players or whatever, and mechanical filters ring. They make distortions, they make harmonics, and that's just the fact of uh, mechanical filters. Uh, when you get an inductor and a capacitor together in a circuit, they're going to make distortion. So there would be artifacts that we could hear. We could hear. Uh, ring into the audio. Uh, nowadays, with oversampling and digital technology the way it is, most of those filters are actually uh, done digitally. They don't have those uh, problems. So uh, today's DACs are infinitely better than uh, vintage equipment in this case. So, um, CDs that you thought maybe sounded bad, maybe they don't sound so bad anymore. Now, uh, CDs are captured at 16-bit 44,100 times a second. So that means that we can capture roughly 22,000 uh, kilohertz. There's a little bit of a, a slop there for the filters and it's ringing. Also, when digital technology started, you know, with audio, they used three quarter inch tape and that happened to be a rate that was compatible. But anyway, don't worry about any of that stuff. There it is. Sample rate. Why the numbers are what they are. If we are getting high-res audio, 96 kilohertz. We're sampling at 96,000 times a second. It means we can hear audio up to 48,000 kilohertz. That's right. I said it right. Um, it doesn't mean that we're getting audio any better in the range we can hear. 
Now, I think I said it, we, we can hear up to 20,000 uh, hertz. If we were a baby, uh, if you are a, uh, a doughy middle-aged man like myself, if you could hear up to 15,000 hertz, that's pretty good. You're more likely can hear up to 12,000 hertz. There is uh, plenty of debate, though, um, that frequencies above 20,000 hertz interacts with audio that's lower, that we can hear, or that we can feel it, even though we can't hear it, and that affects it. I don't know. But don't think that you're getting more audio when you're at 96,000 hertz in that 20 to 20,000 uh, range. You're not. There you go. Sample rate. On to bit depth. Bit depth is the uh, numerical representation of amplitude, how loud something gets. If you listened to a 4-bit, uh, 44,100 uh, sample rate file, the sound would be perfect. You would still capture everything. But what you would hear is the noise floor. So the number of bits does equal how far away the noise floor is. Four, you're going to hear, it's going to sound terrible because of the noise, but you'll actually hear the music just fine. Eight bits, better, you're still going to hear noise, but you know the sampling that was done in the 80s was on 8-bit equipment. 16-bit. So now we've got a larger dynamic range. 96 uh, decibels below the top of the audio, or just, we'll say my head, right? 96 uh, decibels below uh, is the noise floor. So the dynamic range can go all the way down to 96 before we start hearing anything. Now, uh, most of the music that we listen to today is roughly 3 de decibels. It barely has any dy dynamic range at all. Any of our uh, uh, favorite rock and jazz from the 60s uh, could have up to 15 Often doesn't. 10 is probably closer to what it has, but could have up to 15. Your classical music could possibly have up to 30 decibel of uh, range, dynamic range. Uh, vinyl record is uh, can way handle that, and so can your CD. 16-bit, um, 96 decibels of dynamic range. So that's it. If we increase or decrease the bits, the amount of frequencies that we can hear are still the same. All it is is noise floor. And that's really kind of a hard thing to wrap your head around. That the bit doesn't matter, but it doesn't. It just, it's in relation to the noise floor. So if we go to 24 bit, now that uh, dynamic range is at 144 decibels. So we've got much more range, which for production, for capturing sound is beneficial because we don't have to be nearly as critical with uh, capturing audio if we decide to raise the volume, you know, it's all in proportion, we've got much more slop room, is basically all it is. So when we go from 16 to 24, it's really just more slop room. If it was captured correctly, it doesn't add anything, to be honest with you, at 16-bit to 24-bit. If you are a uh, producer of music, if you're in, you know, the business, if you're involved doing stuff with the sound, if you're capturing uh, a needle drop of your record, 24-bit is beneficial over 16, but it has nothing to do with the frequency range and the quality of the sound. So, 16-bit, 44.1K, your CD sound can capture all the sound that you, you possibly think it, it, it can. And uh, this is where now people are going to debate me and leave me nasty comments, and I understand. Um... So, what I've decided to do was I'm going to make a, a, a couple of files here for us to test. It'll be, uh, the link will be below. We can listen to these sound clips of a vinyl record that I'm going to capture at 9624, and then I'm going to convert that to CD rate, and then I'm going to convert it also then down to a lossy MP3 at 320 and 192. Uh, kilobits per second. 
and we'll see what we can hear. And that sounds like a fair uh, test to me. You're going to need quality headphones, not earbuds, and a quality sound card if you can. A laptop sound card is probably not going to do so well, but uh, surprisingly your iPad and probably your phone has a better DAC in it than, than your laptop will. So they might be good enough, but you're going to need real headphones to do this test, or at least plug into real speakers. I already said bit depth, so let's get into it. So bit depth is kind of a combination of frequency, um, sample range, you know, sample rate, and bit depth. It's a, it's a numeric representation of how many how much information is being used to recreate the sound. The higher the number, the better the sound. So um, a lot of most people can't tell the difference between a CD and 320 kilobit um, MP3 player uh, MP3. They just can't hear the difference. And uh, lots of people can't hear the difference at 256. A lot of people can't hear the difference at 192. And as we go lower, then we start hearing definitely a difference. Our DVD videos are at 448 kilobits per second. So a little bit higher than the best quality MP3 that we can pretty much get. Sirius Radio, which I've said before sounds terrible, is like 30 kilobits a second, uh, up to 60 kilobits a second. So way below what your iTunes or whatever downloads are going to be, uh, almost half. Uh, most of the iTunes originally, or any file sharing sites, whatever, were at 128 kilobits a second, and not quite good enough. And the reason that was picked was because it was good enough for the download speed at the time. We didn't all have high-speed downloads back then. We had dial-up. So, 128 was uh, the way we used to go, and we can do better than that now. Um, and again, so, listen for yourself and see if you can hear a difference between a um, vinyl needle drop at high res, so what Neil Young is trying to push, a CD quality. If you can hear a difference there, then you know that a high res is important to you. And I'm going to say, one of you is going to definitely hear the difference. Maybe two of you. Maybe 10 of you, but I'd be surprised if more than 10% of you could hear a difference uh, between the high-res and the uh, CD version. I also am going to be surprised if you, any, any of you um, of the remaining 90% uh, can hear a difference between the CD and 320. I'd be surprised. From what I've read, a lot of different um, uh, sample studies, it's, it's, it's a very small number of people that can. And... Uh, Below that, it's going to start falling off. But I think you'll be shocked that even at 192, um, I can hear a difference, but it's not... I can hear... A, it's a difference. It doesn't sound bad at all. It's just I hear a difference. So, there we go. Three different terms. Tell me what you think, people. Be nice. Okay.